What's up, King fans? We're here. We're drinking beers. And we're talking about your Sacramento Kings. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Royal Rebounds TV. Calvin and I are breaking down the NBA draft lottery today. As many of you know, the Sacramento Kings have the ninth pick in this year's NBA draft. Calvin, how are you feeling about the ninth pick? Well, a little underwhelmed, I guess, right? I mean, we were all hoping for something higher than the ninth pick. I think if you look at the team needs, first and foremost, I would say they, their number one target should be a big man. Um, I think they could also very much use a backup wing. Um, nine is, is a little bit of a difficult position for that, right? Because outside of Evan Mobley, who we all think is great, he, we know he's going to go in the top three or four picks. So the Kings have no shot at him, basically, unless they trade up. Um, the rest of this draft is very guard and wing heavy. So there are a couple other big men that I like. I don't know about you, but I think it's a reach to take them at nine. Um, so it's really an interesting kind of puzzle that they have to put together now. And, and I'm really interested to see what Monty McNair does. We kind of assumed or thought that he might trade their pick last year. They sat at 12 and Tyrese Halliburton fell into their lap. So I'm interested to hear what your take is for where you think they're going to go at nine. Hey Kings fans, make sure you hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel so you find out when we put out more awesome new Kings videos. Well, I, I gotta say that 9 is better than 12. I, I know we got a steal last year with, with pick number 12, um, Tyrese Halliburton being named all-rookie team. Pretty excited about that. But you know, looking at mock drafts, I didn't think we were going to drop any, any below 8, but you know, we went on that winning streak to end the season. Gave all of us Kings fans a little bit of hope. But, you know, honestly, I feel like they probably got to trade this pick. Maybe package it with Buddy Heald or, or Harrison Barnes, Marvin Bagley, and, and try and trade up. Maybe move higher in the draft or, or maybe trade for a more win-now player. I think that the Kings have been stuck in this build-for-the-future stage for the last 15 years. And I think it's it's... Finally, time to bring in a, a, a guy that's ready to pair with De'Aaron Fox and, and win now. I agree with that totally. Um, the, the thing about a trade scenario is it's such an unknown, right? Because not only is it unknown as to what the Kings are looking for, um, for anybody outside of the organization, but you also don't know what other teams are trying to do. You know, there's teams sitting at eight, seven, six. Uh, maybe they try to trade up. Maybe they're looking to trade back. So there's just so much unknown in that scenario. If I'm looking at just purely where the, the draft is right now at nine, the, the good thing about this draft is it's a really deep draft. That's what everybody is saying. There's a lot of good players, not only in picks one through 10, but even later than that. So, you know, there are a couple guys that I think are intriguing for the Kings in this situation. Franz Wagner is one of them. Small forward out of Michigan. He is a very, very multi-dimensional type player. Um, a guy that I think could really benefit from playing behind somebody like Harrison Barnes. I think their games are pretty similar. They're about the same size. They're not, you know, super outstanding in any one particular area, but they're very solid across the board. Solid defenders good playmakers. Wagner's a better passer than Harrison Barnes is right now. He's a decent shooter, a guy that can run your offense from the wing position. Um, and another guy would be Jalen Johnson, who I think a lot of people are sleeping on right now because of his, he had a foot injury. He only played 13 games. Then he decided to opt out. A lot of people suspected that maybe the opt out was a cover for the foot injury or vice versa. Um, but when this guy was on the floor, he is an extremely athletic big man. Shot very well from three, too. 44% from three, small sample size, 13 games, but shot really, really well. Um, I think he could be a good piece for them. He's a very good defender as well, which is something that we all know the Kings need desperately. So They do They do need some more defenders, and I know you and I are bummed that they don't have a, a, shot, at, a shot at Evan Mobley. Um, he's probably going to go number two. Uh, you and I were, were very high on him, especially with the possibility of potentially losing Rashawn Holmes now in free agency. I love uh, Wagner. Unfortunately, all the mock drafts I've looked at, I, I see him going number seven to the Warriors. Um, and, you know, 
as a Kings fan, I, I don't know if I'll be excited to draft another power forward out of Duke, especially a guy coming off no, injury. It's a little bit of a sensitive subject right now. Yeah. yeah, coming off injury, we still got one on the roster. We're trying to get rid of him. So you know, a lot of a lot of potential here. I think we're gonna find out a lot more in the next couple weeks about what the plan is for the Kings. I know last year they said best available. So if you're choosing best available, you don't really have a guy that you're aiming for in the draft. You're basically sitting back, watching everyone else make their move and see what, what falls to you. And that's a good strategy, but I think I'd be happier if, if they plan to trade the pick and maybe best available was a fallback instead of plan A. I, I like that plan. I also think if you're going to look at trading the pick, I would rather see them trade back in the draft than trade up. Um, it would be great if they could get into that top three or four. There are so many players yeah. that I love in that range that would be great for them. But I just don't think it's realistic. I don't think any of the teams that are in those positions are going to be willing to trade out of that spot. Houston's interesting because they have three first-round picks. But at number two, I don't see them moving yeah. out of that spot. So, like I said, it's a deep draft, right? So if you could trade back into the mid-teens, somewhere like 16, 17, get either more picks or somebody like you said who's going to help build a win now sort of momentum going for them i think that would be a great situation for them there are a lot of guys that are going to be in that range that i think would be good draft picks and i honestly think if you take somebody like franz wagner even at seven that's a bit of a reach i, I think he really would have benefited from having another year in college yeah like the, you could say for a lot of guys but he's one of those people that i think is going up too early doesn't mean he's not going to be a good pro, but I think a pick that high for him is a, a bit of a risk. So, And are, are you worried about a free agency heading into the draft, or, or are you just going to wait and see how the draft plays out and move on from there? Because there are some guys that might be available. I, I heard Chris Paul's opting out. You know, odds are he's going to stay with Phoenix and all that, but I never thought that I'd see him opt out of that last year. I think it's like 44 to pass on million. $44 million dollars is a you, pretty you guys. Uh, Victor Oladipo is going to be available. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of big guys available. So I, I know the Kings are not a but destination. But here's the catch-22 with both of those situations. With Chris Paul, would I like to have Chris Paul on the team? Absolutely. But we got a really solid group of guards on this team already. That's going to really slow down minutes for probably Tyrese Halliburton, DeLon Wright, Terrence Davis. Yep. Um, and then with Victor Oladipo, the guy just can't stay healthy for to save his life, really. So outside of those possibilities, when you look at the free agent class, obviously you've got Rashawn Holmes, who we both agreed needs to be re-signed, and that's a major priority for Sacramento. But other than that, there's nobody that I'm really thinking the Kings have to get this guy. It's going to make or break their season, change their their course, their their uh, trajectory for the next couple of years. So I'm not worried about free agency going into the draft, I would think. I think the only thing that I'm really worried about as far as free agency would be losing players like a Rashawn Holmes. Sure. Maybe I'd look uh, in the draft to replace him or at least have a backup plan. Uh, when you look at a team like the Chicago Bulls, they made a trade for Vucevic. They gave up this year's draft pick. You know, they gave up an, more than that. But you got to think that Vucevic is anything is better than anything that they're going to get in this year's draft. So should the Kings consider making a similar move? And who would you want to target? Again, so many factors come into play with that. It's, it's how easily available are some of these guys. Um, what type of package can you put together? Ben Simmons is a huge hot topic right now. I know a lot of Kings fans have been putting vibes out saying they want to go get him. He would be a great fit, but what are you going to give up to get him? Are the Sixers going to take that deal? Buddy Heald is, I think, an attractive piece for Philadelphia. There's no secret they want shooters. He was rumored to be in their wish list last year. But you're going to have to give up a lot more than that just to make the salaries match first and foremost. You know, I think the Kings as of right now, need to focus on controlling what they can control, and that's this draft process. I realize some of that is is tied into, if you're going to make a trade, it's tied into that, or, or if you're going to plan for losing somebody. But I, I don't think that's the way Monty McNair is going to operate, right? You're not going to plan for, well, Rashawn Holmes is gone, we've lost him, so we better draft his replacement. 
Um, I do think they should target a big man, and I think that they should make that a priority, not because they're going to lose Rashawn Holmes, but I think that's a piece that they're missing. Either somebody who's going to eventually replace Marvin Bagley and play alongside Rashawn, or somebody who can come off the bench. We like Metu, we like Damian Jones, but I think if you can find a guy who is already at that level or better and is going to project to be better than both of those players, it's going to put them way ahead of schedule. I guess we'll have to wait and find out, see what happens. It's the beauty of the offseason, right? It is. We'll catch you all on July 29th for the NBA uh, draft. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Go Kings! Go Kings!